didn't know that was in there. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Vashon Island Unitarian Universalists. <laughs> As we settle in, we are finding the balance of being and listening, sharing and singing. Let's find our voice and repeat after me. If you are on Zoom, you may please unmute yourself and we'll join all together to say, it is good. It is good. It is good to be here. It is good to be here. It is good to be here with you. It is good to be here with you. Great. Thanks, everyone. Now Zoom gets to remute. There we go. <laughs> My name is Jessica Wesch, and I'll be your service leader today. Um, and we are continuing to celebrate Pride Month to bring that to our monthly theme of delight and to end our service year with the flower ceremony <laughs> we are strengthened and enriched by weaving together the cherished work of our volunteers and contributors um, who give their time and energy to the running of our congregation our board of directors our various committees our minister Reverend Victoria Pulling uh, and community members who contribute their talent. Thank you to everyone who contributed to our beloved community. Important values that we hold are freedom of belief, diversity, hospitality, and social justice. We seek to promote a sense of community meant to enrich our spirits. Whoever you are, wherever you have come from, whatever your beliefs, whomever you may love, and however bumpy your life's journey, know that you are welcome here. We are clear in our desire to acknowledge that we are on the traditional homeland of the, say it Kim, Squibosh, uh, Coastal Salish uh, Native people, Squibosh. Uh, the Puyallup and Muckleshoot people have lived on and stewarded these lands since the beginning of time and continue to do so today. We recognize that this land acknowledgement is one very small step towards true allyship and we commit to uplifting the voices, experiences, and histories of the indigenous people of this land and beyond <clears throat> and, to, and we commit to pursuing social justice for indigenous peoples. We are pleased to have our own Mark Wells of that show. Nice Yay. to be back. And, um, and uh, our technical support is being provided by Alex Clark. And then we're, we're meeting in a hybrid fashion. Some of us are at Lewis Hall in person, and other members of our community are with us on Zoom from far and wide. <clears throat> the chat function on the Zoom will be turned on only during joys and concerns and will be closed at all other times. The Zoom, those on Zooms can all also reach out directly to Alex if they have technical issues. 
Now please, everyone, settle in. I invite you to set aside your thoughts and experiences and all the rush, rush that happened this morning before you arrived here, and to settle in and be present in this moment and in community. Welcome our chalice slaters, Pamela and Earl Gott. Aunt Dovey is going to light the cellist while I do the reading. <laughs> the reading is We Are Not Alone by Michael DeVern and Boblet. We are not alone. We are this flame, ancient as the stars, new as the vulnerable spark. We are not alone. We are this chalice. Rim by the spiral dance of searching, we are not alone. We are the light soaring, the shadow deepening, the dance between them, we are not alone. We are the heirs of the tribes and their fires and the healers and their circles, we are not alone. We are here. We are here for ourselves, we are here for each other, and we are not alone. In the way? <laughs> okay. Thanks so much for reading the chalice lighting. Uh, I'd like to invite Craig up to uh, share a brief um, announcement. Reverend Polling, on behalf of your congregation, we'd like to congratulate you on, on your ordination as a Unitarian Universalist minister. Kim Kambach and I, as most of you know, uh, participated in Reverend Poling's ordination ceremony at the Quimper UU uh, Fellowship in Port Townsend. Um, it, it was a beautiful building and grounds. Uh, I was a little bit jealous of all, <laughs> of, all of that. <laughs> Not that I don't love Lewis Hall, you see. But <laughs> it, was a, it was truly a marvelous place uh, to hold uh, faith-affirming and moving ceremony. So thank you for the invitation. Reverend Poling, as this church year comes to a close on behalf of your, of your congregation, I want to thank you for your many contributions to BIUU. Your thoughtful inputs to some of our committees as well as the board of directors, along with your thought-provoking sermons and your other ministerial activities, always performed with a cheerful countenance but a seriousness of purpose, have made you an integral part of of the life force of our congregation. We are fortunate to have you as our now ordained minister. So thank you. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, everyone. I'm honored <laughs> and overjoyed to be your now ordained minister. Our, our uh, opening words this morning are a responsive reading. So you get to participate. We'll be dividing into two halves. Uh, you are on the right and you are on the left. And what we'll be doing together is consecrating our flowers. And the act of consecration is the act of uh, conferring sacredness or holiness on something or recognizing that sacredness or holiness that is already within something, uh, namely these flowers. So um, the words here are on the screen. They're written by Reverend Sarah Shore, who is our UUA representative. Some of you may have met her. She's wonderful. 
Uh, so those of you on the right, will you begin with me? These flowers we see before us, they come in many shades and colors. They come in many sizes and shapes. They carry different scents. Some have no scent at all. Yet all were created by the same miracle. The miracle that these blossoms grow every year out of the divine mixing of water, soil, and sunshine. Our lives are miracles as well. Despite our trials and disappointments, people come every year to celebrate flower communion. To be reminded that all of us have value and all have a place in the beauty of the world. Be reminded that where you came from is not as important as the fact that you are here now. To be reminded that all are welcome and all may receive at the communion table of this church. We come to be a part of something greater than ourselves. Thank you, everyone. Our flowers are now consecrated. Each year, as spring and summer, spring turns towards summer, the, the buds swell and burst into flowers. Our experience, we experience our world with delight. There are weddings and graduations. Um, and our natural world steps in with the gifts of beauty from the universe. Unitarian Universalists celebrate the beauty and glory of our natural world with a flower ceremony. We bring and share, mingling the fruits of our gardens and leaving with evidence of the miracle of nature. The diverse flowers in our ceremony symbolizes the diversity of people in our faith tradition who make up our communities. For Pride Month, we especially lift up the diverse and delightful ways in which we express gender, sexual orientation, and intimate relationships. And we remember, especially, that as people who are transgender and as allies, we have a freedom, a sanctuary, and a voice of resistance to offer here in Washington State to those who are no longer safe in states in this difficult time. Um, a lot of anti-trans um, legislation going on, and, and we have some, even in our own communities, some seeking sanctuary here. We remember all have value and are important. And I want to note here that these flowers I brought today were a gift to my son by his date for prom. <laughs> you know, his date brought him flowers. <laughs> so today uh, leading our flower ceremony is um, Reverend Victoria Poling. And our opening song this morning is called Bring a Flower by Amanda Udis Kessler and was written for this year's flower cer ceremony centennial. And Mark, will you please play it once through uh, so we can hear the melody and the lyrics will be projected on the screen. Sure. Hopefully, we have the same lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> I got not. them off the internet, and you know that there can be a little variation. Um, uh, and uh, since I don't really play melody, I'll, I'll sing it once through, and, uh, and then, um, uh, then we'll just repeat that first verse again, and, and uh, then move on.
Bring a flower, take a flower, there are flowers here for all, full of beauty for our senses, round and round and large and small. Let me try that one. Bring a flower, take a flower, there are flowers here for all. Full of beauty for our senses, round and narrow, large and small. Share your blessings, lean on others, help your neighbor, then receive. Feed the hungry, tend the hurting, we'll be with you when you grieve. As we labor, as we wonder, as we heed the justice call, bring a flower, take a flower, there are flowers here for all. Not bad for our first time through. <laughs> Our reading for today is a story about diversity as told through a conversation amongst the flowers by Reverend Kate Wilkinson. One day, two children stood side by side looking at the garden, which was in full bloom. Isn't it pretty, said the first, with all the different colors. Oh, I don't see color, said the other, for this is what their parents had taught them to say. This started up quite a conversation amongst the flowers <laughs> who spoke their own quiet language to each other. That just makes me want to cry, said the bleeding heart, <laughs> who was full of feeling on the best of days. You always want to cry, said the iris, who is always self-possessed, never shedding petals here and there like the apple blossoms, which grew above her. But it's so sad, said the bleeding heart, not to see color. Don't worry, said the flag, upright and direct as always. They're just pretending anyway when they say that. <laughs> but why would they pretend such a thing, asked the peony indignantly. It would be such a shame not to see all of my beautiful magenta layers. Of all the flowers in the garden, she was the most showy because they were taught the wrong thing about this country when they got here, said the flag, who often spoke about the country's founding. They were told this place was a melting pot, that everyone should become the same. The sweet grass, who had been here long before, swayed gently in the breeze and added, they didn't understand that this land is a garden, that we each add beauty with our different colors and shapes and sizes. Well, I certainly do, said the peony, ever confident. <laughs> they forget, said the lupin, that we bloomed in our own way and in different seasons to make the world more beautiful. But will they remember, asked the nervous forget-me-not, <laughs> always preoccupied with questions of legacy. <laughs> That's why we're here, remarked the daisy, who, though humble, knew the power of a simple gesture, having once been placed into the barrel of a gun to proclaim peace. That's why we're here, to remind them. This is the story of the flowers. <laughs> Let's take a moment for a musical response.
This year marks the centennial of the Unitarian Universalist flower ceremony. This ritual has gone by a variety of names in different congregations, and in today's telling of the story, you'll hear it referred to as the Flower Communion, which references the Unitarian Christian heritage out of which this ritual arises. I'm going to be telling a story, a version of the story, written by Reverend Sarah Shore. The story of Flower Communion begins in Prague, in the former Czechoslovakia. In June of 1923, it was created by a Unitarian minister named Norbert Chopek. The city of Prague at this time was in turmoil as it tried to recover from World War I. Czechs had traditionally been staunch supporters of religious freedom, but during many years of German rule had been forced to practice Catholicism. The people of Prague embracing their new freedom, were trying to rebuild their community, but they were faced with widespread hunger and were lacking necessities such as warm clothing. Reverend Chopek was a minister of the new and growing Unitarian Church of Prague, and he was known for his uplifting sermons and hymns and welcoming community. Chopek knew that during these hard times, people needed something even more special. He wanted a religious ritual that would bind his diverse community together in hope and in care. He knew the traditional communion service of the local Catholic Church would not be comforting to many of his parishioners, some of whom who had felt let down by what they saw as corruption in the powerful Catholic leadership. But what kind of ritual would work? What kind of ritual could help to create, to heal his community of the wounds and unify the people? Reverend Chopek looked to nature to find a solution. For his special ritual, he asked everyone to bring a flower to church, just like you have brought a flower to our congregation today. It could be from a garden, or it could be a wild flower from the side of the road. Even a twig or a leaf would be fine. As people entered the church, their flowers were collected in a large vase. And at a special point in the service, the children brought forward the truly spectacular bouquet. The flowers were consecrated with prayers and hymns written by Reverend Chopek, as we have consecrated our flowers together today. And at the end of the service, everyone was invited to take home a flower. But they were to take home a different flower than the one they brought and they were to take flowers just as they came, without regard for where they came from or who had brought them. And this was the first service of what came to be called Flower Communion in 1923. Reverend Chopek wanted the diverse flowers in his communion service to symbolize people. Many different flowers can make a beautiful bouquet, and many different people can make a beautiful community. All have value and all are important. This service was very successful in this hard time and touched many people deeply, and so it became a church tradition. The story also has a tragic part. Hitler's troops began to occupy Prague in 1939, and by 1940, the Prague Unitarian Church was under the surveillance of the Gestapo, the Nazi police. Reverend Chopek and his Unitarian Church were not popular with the Nazis, and in fact, their court records stated that Chopek was too dangerous to the empire to be allowed to live. In 1942, Norbert Chopek was taken to the Dachau concentration camp, where he died. He was a good minister to the very end, a kind presence to those in the camp with him, and when he could, he wrote letters of encouragement home to Unitarians in Prague. We Unitarian Universalists, like so many other religious groups, have religious martyrs, people who died for their faith. So we count Chopek as one of our heroes, not because he died, but because he was willing to stand up for what was right and true, even if it meant he would be killed for doing so. Norbert Chopek shows us an example of courage to speak the truth of love, even when faced with the threat of death. 
This flower communion service has made a permanent difference in our faith. In 1939, when Maya Chapek, his wife, and a minister herself, brought the flower communion to the United States, it has been celebrated in Unitarian churches all over the continent since. While Norbert Chapek may have died, his touching ritual and his strong belief in affirming and celebrating the importance of everyone lives on today. We have new symbols. This was his original symbol. This is the uh, Unitarian, Czech Unitarian emblem. It says Veritas Vincit, and you can see the sunflowers under the sun as a representation of that joy and that life. Remember, Traffic's message lives on in this very service today as we celebrate our own flower communion. At the end of our service, each of us will receive and go home with at least one flower that we do not choose ourselves. Rather, it will be one that we are given as a sign of being open to what we receive and as a symbol of openness to who is here within our diverse community. So please join me now in a moment of silent contemplation and reflection on the history and the wisdom behind our flower ceremony today. Amen. Our hymn of reflection is a newly rediscovered hymn written by Norbert Chapek. On March 31, 1942, while he was in the concentration camp in Dachau. The song, I got emotional with this one. The song is called, My Life Has Been Worthwhile. Imagine that in those circumstances, writing this song. So the words will be projected on screen. And again, Mark, if you could help us learn this song together, this will be a new one for us as well. A very new one for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful song, though. is made worthwhile by fighting bravely on for those ideals I hold most great and holy though evil winds may blow they will not rob the calm in my soul which remains both quiet and lowly I might be disappointed I might fall in the fight, but I am sure that my life was worth living. I am life which is to come, it's been my holy shrine. I trust that I have lived a life worth giving. So that is the first verse and the chorus. My life is worth worthwhile. By fighting bravely on For those ideals I hold most great and holy Though evil winds may blow They will not rob the calm In my soul which remains so quiet and holy Might be disappointed I might fall in the fight but I am sure that my life was worth living. The life which is to come has been my holy shrine. I trust 
that I have lived a life worth giving For heaven waits for those whose spirits have won through But I am sure that my life was worth living And they will find the sun whose minds have let them rise and stand against the darkness and the mayhem I might be disappointed I might fall in the fight but I am sure that my life was worth living the life which is to come has been my holy shrine I trust that I have lived a life worth that was beautiful, Mark. Thank you. Um, as a caring community, we set aside set aside time to share the joys and concerns of our lives by speaking briefly from the heart. It is a time to honor the common humanity and sacred spirit within each of us. If you are online and would like to share a joy or a concern, please put it in the chat and Alex will share it. For those of you in Lewis Hall, please come forward and light a candle and share with us. And you are also welcome to light a silent candle. We can join together and um, sing There is a Love. members and friends of the Unitarian um, Universalist Vashon Island Uni oh sorry Vashon Island Unitarian Universalist we commit to supporting our fellowship financial resources to help us pay speakers and staff and maintaining our building we engage also beyond our walls for peace social and economic justice freedom of belief and protection of the planet and its inhabitants we have traditionally committed to contributing a fourth of our offerings to community organizations that align with our values. And today uh, we will be contributing this offering to our beloved community as we financially support our congregation. As well as making your contribution here as we pass the basket, you can send your pledges and offerings um, to our PO box or online on our website. I always donate from my phone so, you, you know, it's kind of impolite to get your phone out at church, but if you're donating, that's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From our treasure. Um, do we have baskets to pass the offerings? Here we are. We're good. And as we pass the baskets, we will sing We Give Thanks.
this precious day for all gathered here those far away for this time we share with love and this precious day oh we give thanks for this precious day for all gathered here knows far away for the time we share with love and care oh we give this precious day. Many thanks to Mark for the wonderful music and to Pam and Earl for lighting our chalice and to Alex Clark for tech support and to Reverend Pulling for the story of our flower ceremony and to all who participated. Um, and we have a closing, closing words, which I'll read. <laughs> um, Kindled New Sparks by Deborah Burrell. We have basked in the warmth and beauty of this flame and this community. As our chalice flame is extinguished, let us carry its glow within. Let us kindle the new sparks within these walls and beyond. I'm going to ring the chime to conclude our service. And we'll have some closing music. Yes? Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> and then it's not after the, the list. <laughs> okay, closing music. And then um, after that, we'll have a moment for announcements. So uh, uh, feel free. Uh, to sing along if you if you know this song uh, it's Peter Mayo's Blue Boat Home Low below me I feel no motion standing on these mountains and plains far away from the rolling ocean Still my dry land heart can say That I've been sailing all my life now Never harbor or port of I know The wide universe is the ocean I travel And the earth is my blue boat home Sun my sail and moon my rudder as I fly the starry sea leaning over the edge in wonder casting questions into the deep drifting here with my ship's companions all we can pilgrim souls making our way by the light of the heavens in our beautiful blue boat home I give thanks to the waves upholding me hail the great winds urging me on greet the end and see before me sing the sky my sailor song and I was born upon that never harbor or port have I known the wide universe is the ocean I travel and the earth is my 
announcement uh we're gonna have the fourth of july party at our house spencer and i will. yeah so um we'll send an email out about that but um and you know I, I don't know do people want earlier in the day or more like the evening can't quite see this fireworks from my house unfortunately but um so there'll be more to come about that any other announcements for the yeah okay. can see them from here though yeah that's my name is Marilee, and on behalf of the Social Justice Committee, I want to invite everyone to join us when we have staff members from Community Passageways uh, come to Vashon for a day of um, learning about each other, gathering together. We envision a hike, some lunch, maybe frisbee golf. Um, we've offered them the last two weekends in July, and when we hear back which day they've chosen, we'll send an email out to all of you and we'd love to have you join us the purpose of this is to continue to, to sorry <laughs> continue to develop our relationship with community passageways thank you thank you I'm Kim and um, your newsletter will be coming out twice a month now so if you do have announcements like with those dates and and so on about what times things are happening please send them to Runa or to myself or to Victoria or to one another it doesn't matter just make sure that we get it to one spot so we can get those sent out and congratulations to all of us for 40 services I feel um, wow. really good about that it's fabulous and the board, new and old, please just meet back in the office to pick up your books. It's your uh, summer reading assignment. So um, looking forward to a good year. Thank you. CBEC is the annual retreat. It's coming up uh, August 18th, 19th, and 20th at CBEC. We still have a few rooms available for anyone that would like to come. Um, but for those who are already coming, uh, I have to fill out an alternative diet request form if anyone is a vegetarian or vegan or non-celiac gluten-free or dairy-free or some combination of those. So if you're one of those, please let me know and fill out this out on the form that I have to send in. Thank you. And, and again, anyone that can come, please let me know. I have been taxed with the great job of providing the, uh, prizes for bingo and whatever else fun little things we want to do. <laughs> and it's really fun. And I've been getting some very interesting things at Granny's. And mostly I find things in cupboards I haven't opened for a long time at home. You know, something that was once precious to me that now my children are going to go, oh, Mom. So if you have any precious things you'd like to redistribute, um, fill a bucket, fill a bag, and get it to me sometime before. I like to wrap all the gifts because I want everything to be a surprise. No matter how weird or wonderful it is, <laughs> I'd like it to be wrapped. So you can wrap them, I'll wrap them, whatever. But if you're not going to see Beck, please come. It's so much fun. I just, Mark was playing that song and I just envisioned this this fire and Mark singing and all of us with tears in our eyes because it's so beautiful. That was just a wonderful song, Mark. So, um, Raise your hands if you're coming to see Beck. Whoa, I love it. Raise your hands if you're thinking you might come, and we'll encourage you. <laughs> it's really fun. I love it, I, and I hope you all join us. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone. I just want to remind you of my summer schedule. I am available to you through the end of June. I will be taking vacation in July, in which case I will only uh, accept phone calls from Kim, our board presidents, in the event of emergency. And then I will be back in August. Uh, I will be at the Sunday service in Seabeck, and I am going to be working on having that Zoom. So if you uh, are yearning for a summer um, worship experience, it might be somewhat minimal with a laptop in front of whoever's speaking on the podium. I don't know. But uh, we'll, we'll try to work to make that happen and, and send that out in the bi-weekly newsletter. Were there any other announcements? OK, good. <laughs> One more thing? OK pledged for next year that the stewardship committee is very grateful for your donations because we want to be able to afford our minister next year as well as the rent and everything else. So thank you for making your pledges. And if you haven't already gotten your pledge in, please do it. <laughs> thank you, Pamela. We need to give. It's good for us. Alex? As we move now into our flower communion, I just want to offer a statement of grace that some of you may be visiting for the first time today or did not know about the ceremony or forgot. And if you have come without a flower, that is fine. People have bought many extra flowers and all are welcome to partake of this special ritual. And by some special miracle, like in the Christian story of the loaves and fishes, there are always flowers left over at the end of our flower communion. It is the grace of our congregation's community that all may receive this special gift. So now I offer you our closing words today by our outgoing UUA president, Reverend Susan Gray, Susan Frederick Gray. May we remain always mindful of how radical and powerful love is. How dangerous those who use fear to build power know love to be. How necessary and essential the spirit and struggle for universal love, for human dignity, for reverence for all life, every life, all creation remains, always. As we go forth today, remember, we are among the keepers of this flame. And so as we depart for our fellowship hour, let us sing, go now in peace, and our flower servers will come among you and gift you each with a flower to grace your lives. <laughs> just add to this that I've gotten really good at sticking things in the ground and they grow. I can Roses will do that. Put them in a pot where they stay wet in the winter. and I'll Just put them in the ground and see if you can make this grow. The, mostly the woody plants. Thank <laughs> you.